Welcome back, Lakeview, to another reading of the one and only Bob. Last time we read, Bob had heard a familiar voice on the police um, intercom, and it led him to the animal shelter where he found his long-lost sister. And in talking to his sister, he realized that she had had a really rough life and no one had taken care of her. She had had a lot of puppies, and there was one puppy in particular that got left behind when she got captured by animal control. So Bob's really concerned about her and we're gonna find out more about what happens with his sister. So for those of you reading along at home, we are on page 254. Not right. I stare at my sister and try to imagine all the pain she's endured. And here I thought I'd gotten the raw, raw deal. To lose your pups, to wander alone, to struggle for every drop of water, every crumb of food, I mean, I experienced a little of that, but Ivan and Stella kept me going, and then Julia and her family. Why me? What's so special about me? Is it really that I'm more resilient, that I've made my own luck? Am I somehow better than boss, more deserving? It's not right, I blurt. Not right. You should have had it worse than me. Well, if you want to talk about not right, you and I both had it a whole lot better than our siblings, boss says. I will never forgive those people for what they did to us, I say through clenched jaws. Really? Bob seems surprised. Boss seems surprised. If I held on to that much anger, I'd never get out of bed. Not that I've ever had a real bed. She sniffs at the towel beneath her feet. This towel is kind of nice, actually. I look at her in disbelief. You're one of those, those dogs must forget, forgive no matter what types. She almost looks amused. Well, it is kind of our thing, right? When someone does something hurtful, they have to admit it, I say. Then they have to be punished for it. And maybe then, if they apologize and change, maybe, maybe then they get forgiven. All I know is I've done lots of bad stuff in my life, Bob. I've had to forgive myself plenty, just, you know, to get through the day. Boss gazes at me with her wise, weary eyes. And I figure if I'm going to forgive myself, I'd better be ready to cut everyone else some slack, some slack too evacuate now. Look, says the officer, you need to evacuate now. It's mandatory. We can't just leave these animals. Cowboy sticks his finger in the orange cat's cage. The cat rubs against it, purring like his life depends on it, which maybe it kind of does. The officer sighs. You don't have a choice. We can't just leave them, says Boots. And I have to applaud her enthusiasm, even as I wander, wonder why she'd risk her life for us. There is no explaining humans. Just got word. The bridge over Big Fork Creek collapsed, the officer says. You guys gotta move. Boots snaps my, her fingers. Wait, you have a cop car, right? Yes, I have a vehicle, ma'am, says the officer. But the way the roads are looking, probably not for long. Okay, says Boots. So we evacuate. We evacuate every last dog and cat and dribble we can get in your car. The officer purses his lips. And take them where exactly? Shelter at the high school. That's where we've been sending people. They're not really set up for it, but once we started flooding and the elementary school stopped taking pets, they agreed to do what they can. The officer grumbles, considers, goes for it. The three humans load cats and dogs, parakeets and hamsters, one after another into the police car. Some are in cages and some, including a couple of unhappy cats, are on tug-of-war strings. Finally, it's our turn. Looks like there are nine of us left. Cars full and then some, the officer reports, struggling to shut the shelter's front door against the rising water. We are officially out of room. Cowboy looks at us, his eyes teary. Don't worry, fellas, we'll be back, he sniffles. I promise. You think we should leave the cages open? At least give them a fighting chance, asks Boots. In case, you know, sure, but they couldn't handle this current. I can barely stand up. Cowboy shakes his head. Look, I'll borrow my brother's bass boat. We'll come right back. Hopefully the water won't get much higher than this. Okay, then. Boots gives him a grim nod. Stay calm, friends. Like, that's an option. Preparing for the worst. The wind slows for a moment and the room grows silent. We stare at the black pool swallowing the cages below. A chew toy shaped like a pink turtle floats past. It's just us and a whole lot of water. I check out the group. Two cats, one bunny, six dogs, including Snickers, Boss, and me. There's nowhere to jump. 
no table, no cabinets, no space above the upper cages. And as Cowboy pointed out, the current is probably too strong for us to tackle anyway. Folks, don't give up hope. You heard them, I say. They're coming back for us. No way are they coming back, says a sad-faced beagle mix. Give me a break. You never know, I say. I'm such a lousy liar. Oh, yes, we do, my sister mutters, just loud enough for me to hear, and we share a look. Look, chances are the water won't get too much higher, I say, but just to be on the safe side, pile up anything you have in your cage, bowls, toys, towels. Who died and made you, pack leader, asks a big mutt with a graying snout. Well, it beats howling like babies, I say, and instantly I remember landing in Stretch's domain. Howling like a baby is exactly what I did. I had a dog biscuit this morning bigger than you, says Gray Muzzle. What about me, someone squeaks. Does the bunny get a vote? Hold on, Thumper, says the orange cat. This clearly is a job for a higher feline in intellect. No, a sharp voice raise, rises above the din. Listen to Bob. He's annoying, and his hygiene leaves a lot to be desired, but I've seen him get himself out of all kinds of scrapes. Thanks for the props, Snick, I say, especially the kind word about my odor. The wind groans, and something metallic hits the side of the building. We fall silent again, waiting for more. The windows rattle. The walls shudder. It's like the building is as scared as the rest of us. So, Snicker says, breaking the gloom, you heard, Bob, start stacking. How about my litter box, asks a small white cat with dark green eyes. Would that work? Sure, I say. Use anything. The goal is to get as high as you can. And then what? asks a young dachshund. Worst case, we swim for it, I say. That's actually not the worst case, says the bunny. No one asks what is. We already know. A question. We do all we can do, which isn't much. The rain hammers, the wind shrieks, sirens come and go in the distance. I wonder what Ivan and Ruby are doing. And what about George and Julia? Where are they? How are they? Boss seems scary calm. Tough as old jerky. She looks the way I want to feel. Before long, the water is lapping onto the floor of our cages. It's ice cold and moving quick. One inch, two. Every now and then someone whimpers or moans, but mostly we're quiet. If you can stand on your hind legs, guys, do it. Climb on anything you got, I suggest. I turn to boss. When I say go, I want you to climb on my back. It'll buy you a little time, maybe. No way. Please, I need to do this. Boss just stares at me. She's so thin. I can see every rib. To make it up to you, I add. What are you even talking about, Bob? I look away. I'm sorry, I say, not sure where my words are taking me. I could have, I, I should have saved you, boss. Saved me? The thing is, I heard you on the highway, and I should have. My voice trails off. I stifle a sob. Bob, we were puppies. Tiny puppies. Don't be ridiculous. How exactly were you going to save me? I don't know, but I should have tried. We both did what we had to do. Boss nudges me gently. Bob, this is crazy. I just, I can't seem to forgive myself. I whisper it, but I know she hears me. Beneath the water, I feel a paw on mine. I forgive you, okay? Not that you need it, mind you. One condition, though. I nod. Wait. You have to forgive yourself, too. Again, I nod, and slowly but surely, something fine and warm begins to feel my heart. Romeo. Before I can say anything more, Snickers calls my name. Bob, dear, there's something I want you to know. Boss winks at me. Listen up, brother. Um, sure, Snickers, I call. What's up? Ahem. Snickers makes a little throat clearing noise. I've kept this locked inside me all this time, but now, facing the end, I feel the need to unburden myself. Really, Snick? I say quickly. There's no need for that. The thing is, Snickers pauses for dramatic effect. I love you, Bob. I always have. I love the way your cute little tail gets all curled between your legs when you're embarrassed. I love the way you hum to yourself when you chew your kibble. I love the way you drool when you take a nap. I love. I think I'm getting the picture, Snick. Thanks. That's awfully nice of you to say. 
And Snicker says, Boss can't hide her amusement. Go ahead, Bob, she whispers. What can it hurt? We're all going to die anyway. Bobbo, Snickers calls. Um, yeah. Yeah, sure. I uh, think you're pretty swell too, Snick. And what is it that you love about me? I close my eyes, take a deep breath. Well, um, those pink boots of yours, those are cool. And I swear I'm trying, but I'm totally drawing a blank. In fairness, the water's up to my belly and my teeth are chattering so loud I can't hear myself think. And uh, I begin, oh, come on, how hard is it, yells the bunny, who's perched on a pile of wet Timothy hay. She's a looker and she's smart and she's way too good for the likes of you. Try that, Romeo. You're a looker and you're smart and you're way too good for the likes of me, I repeat. Snickers lets out a contented sigh. That wasn't so hard, was it, boss asks. I groan. Sis, you have no idea. An interesting life. An awful noise comes like a tree trunk splitting in two. While we watch in disbelief, a piece of the roof the size of a Great Dane simply vanishes. Rain gushes through the hole in torrents. Boss, I say, it's time. Jump on my back. And that's a good idea because why exactly? Because maybe you'll get your turn, I say. Your chance to have things go your way. I had an interesting life. I want you to have one too. Bob, at best, you're buying me a couple extra minutes, boss says. Sis, I'm like 30 seconds older than you. You're not the boss of me. Please? Why? Just because you're a guy, I could take you down in a second with three paws tied behind my back. And if you get out of here and I don't, I continue ignoring her. There's a place I want you to go. Sit on the front porch. Wait for the humans who live there. Who are you kidding, Bob? We're both about to die. Three blocks up, four houses down on the left. Look for a big oak tree. Guy named Nutwit lives there. Nutwit, she's suppressing a smile. Say it, I command. Fine, whatever. Three blocks up, four houses down, Nutwit. We go back and forth like that, arguing, bantering, trying not to hear the terror of our cage mates. And I think maybe I'm starting to hallucinate a little. I'm starving and freezing and I feel kind of dizzy. All the smells and sounds are mingling together. And crazy as it seems, I actually think I catch a whiff of Ivan. Well, that's kind of cool, I think. At least I'll be remembering my best buddy when I die. There are worse ways to go. Hey, the water laps at my mouth, foul tasting and frigid. Now, I say to my sister, Get on my back now. I'm saving you whether you like it or not. Something in my choked voice scares her, I guess, because she leaps right onto my back with a horrified yelp. I blink back muddy water. A silver presence looms before me. Still, I'm not entirely sure it's him until I get a real big old whiff of banana. Hey, Bob, says Ivan. And that is where I'm going to leave you right now. We will see you next time when we continue reading. Have a great night.